I feel once again a little bit more confident about it. Excuse me. So we have Alexander uh, Volkanovsky versus Ilya Taporia. So this is going to be for the 145-pound men's featherweight championship. And this is going to be a uh, five-round fight, each round five minutes, 25 minutes. And it's the main event of this pay-per-view card. And this one was, when I first checked the odds Monday, I believe, originally very close. I want to say at minus 120 to minus 115, somewhere around there, that neighborhood. Since then, Volkanovski is now minus 125. Taporia is plus 105. So a lot more uh, shifting of the odds on this. But all things considered, I still think the odds should be even more drastic on this. This is one of the few. This is one of the few fights in MMA where I would normally say I I do believe the odds should be a bigger gap here. And this is the biggest fight on the whole card, where my head really wants one guy to win. And uh, my heart just wants another guy to win type thing. It's it's really split on who I think is going to win and who I want to win in the worst way out of all the fights on this card. And I want Taporia to win. And throughout the week, I was actually very high on Taporia. I really thought he could get it done. And then as I started digging into the, the tape and kind of studying and reading up, Uh, Once again, I can't give enough credit to Jack Slack. His article about the V-step and the pivot he did on Taporia really helped me think about this fight and kind of analyze things and do some research. After that, after watching tape, after all the research, I now think Volkanovski is going to win. And kind of here's how I arrived to that conclusion, regrettably so, unfortunately. I think there's the intangibles. I talk about tangibles and intangibles when it comes to predicting fights and doing analysis. The intangible for this is people are really discounting Volkanovsky. They're really low on him after that Makashev head kick KO loss that he recently sustained in his attempt to get the 155-pound belt that failed. They're discounting him because of that, and they're also really high on what Taporia was just able to do to Josh Emmett. And while that is very impressive and a very advanced accomplishment and a huge feather in his cap, this has given me shades of when Yair Rodriguez made Josh Emmett look silly, and then he got the title shot off that to face Volkanovski for a 145-pound belt. And we all know how silly Volkanovski made him look. So while it is deserved that Josh Emmett is a very good litmus test, and a very good elite gatekeeper to kind of make the determination at 145 pounds who gets to challenge Volk for the belt. We've already seen Yair Rodriguez make him look silly, and then Volk made him look silly. Uh, Volk made Yair look silly. My gut's just telling me we're going to see the same thing with Taporia. Taporia made Emmett look silly, and Emmett just brutally flatlined, unfortunately, Bryce Mitchell, a guy I really like and a guy I'm a big fan of. Proving once again his career's not over yet. He's still got some left in the tank, and that's great and all. But just because Taporia was able to, you know, withstand the onslaught and really make him look silly, I, I think it's going to be the same thing. Of Volkanovski's now going to have his fun with Taporia, unfortunately. And one of the main reasons why I think that, besides the intangibles of you know people being down on Volkanovski because of the Islam fight. People being, uh, you know, overly hyped on Taporia because of the Emmett win. It's also kind of like right now Taporia is undefeated. And this also reminds me in the history of the 145-pound division of another guy who was undefeated and had a shot at the long-reigning king of 145-pound before Volkanovski, Max Holloway and Brian Ortega. That fight, a lot of people thought was going to be a really close competitive fight. I watched it live, and it was a brutal beatdown. And Max Holloway gave Brian Ortega his first loss, and it was just absolutely very sad to see that Ortega just had nothing to offer Max Holloway. And just my gut with those intangibles is telling me this could be the same thing for Taporia, uh, very reminiscent of that Ortega-Holloway fight. And also there's the tangibles in that MMA is about – 
what are your strengths? How can you amplify those strengths? How can you disguise your weaknesses? How can you identify your opponent's strengths, mitigate those strengths, and increase their weaknesses? Everything that Taporia does well, because you can't do all things well in MMA. As much as people try to game plan, they try to prepare, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. You can only work with as much as you can your skill set and work on refining your skill set and once again trying to take away the other opponent's skill set. It's all about how do you amplify your strengths and mitigate their strengths and all that that I just mentioned. And so for Taporia, that V-step that he uses and that pivot and those entries that he used and showcased so wonderfully against Josh Emmett to make Josh Emmett hit air those are things that Volkanovsky is already used to countering. He's already used to being faced with those. And the tools that he has in terms of especially his kicking arsenal at his disposal is really what I think is going to play the biggest role in this. So Taporia taking a boxing-heavy approach is great. And it's beautiful to watch, and it you know sets him up for a lot of really good KO, TKO wins and just impressive knock-on-ass victories. But it also leaves him very heavy on his uh, on his left leg since he's orthodox as his primarily plant leg, that left leg's forward. So he's going to leave himself like he has throughout numerous times in his previous fights, very open to calf kicks, which Volkanovski throws a lot of calf kicks. It's going to leave him open to some head kicks, some higher kicks. Volkanovski throws those higher kicks. He himself, as a victim of a high kick uh, KO, is going to probably be hell-bent on trying to incorporate that in his arsenal. Sometimes the best thing to get a fighter to incorporate new tools into their toolbox is being a victim of something. And I think him being a victim of that head kick is going to make him kind of hell-bent on using head kicks more, especially against a guy so prone to them as Taporia. And we've already seen a far lesser fighter in the form of Jai Herbert almost flatlined Taporia early in his career with that high kick that Taporia is unfortunately just doing a very poor job of defending and leaving himself open to. So I think there's going to be a lot of kicking on Volkanovsky's part if he's smart. Calf kicks are going to wear on Taporia. He's not doing a very good job of kick, uh, checking those body kicks, and then eventually I foresee a high kick finishing the fight, honestly. And that's kind of surprising, seeing as how Volkanovski's not really been finishing fights lately. Uh, he did against Yair. That was a KO, TKO, I do believe. So all this to say, and when it comes to grappling, <clears throat> don't get me wrong, Taporia is a very good grappler, uh, very good at BJJ, Greco-Roman base, originally primarily was a grappler when he first started MMA. I think as well-rounded and as like a jack-of-all-trades as Taporia is, I think it's one of those cases where Volkanovski is just kind of a master at things. And yeah, he's well-rounded and he's kind of good all around, but Volkanovski's like very glaring strengths are going to kind of trump that well-roundedness. And yeah, even though Volkan uh, excuse me, Taporia can hold his own in grappling, I think Volk's going to be just a little bit better. Even though Taporia is a very gifted striker and has very good boxing, I think Volkanovski is going to be just a little bit better. And all this to say, I really think all things considered, the odds are only this close because Volkanovski is coming off such a brutal loss, unfortunately, at a higher weight class. And he's going to win this fight, and he's going to be really obnoxious because I'm not a fan at all of Volkanovski and any city kickboxing guys. And he's probably going to be like, oh, hey, mate, why don't you let me try to get that 155 title again after I just got my ass kicked? And it's just going to be annoying, and everybody's going to slob on his knob and whatever. But Volkanovski's going to win. The odds should be a lot greater to reflect that gap that just exists in my mind that is so unfortunately severe between the two because I'm begging for Taporia to win, and God, I want to be wrong about this fight more so than even maybe the Gary uh, Neal fight. I really want Taporia to win. He's probably my favorite fighter right now, if not top three, four, five, whatever. But, man, Volkanovski by KO, TKO, plus 250. I feel on my bones that's what's going to happen. You can try all day to game plan. You can try all day in training camp to work on your opponents and what they're going to do and try to predict it, et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, 
it's very hard to deviate, especially when you're being challenged, when you're actually fighting, you're actually stressed out and being challenged. It's very hard to do things differently. You oftentimes under stress revert back to the norm and the norm for Taporia and all of his habits, his traits, his tendencies, and the things that make him great and have gotten him to this point, unfortunately, at this final stage are now things that are almost liabilities and things that, unfortunately, just how the styles match up, play into Volkanovski's strengths, and it's going to be really hard for him to work on things like defending those kicks and those high kicks and those calf kicks without basically castrating his own game plan. What do you think? I love it, Bobby. I haven't said it yet today, so you know what this is. This is a knuck if you buck fight at the card. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, this one I'm going to probably clip at some point because this is going to be prophetic as shit when this comes true. Taporia is going to take the belt from Volkanovski, but not this fight. Oh, okay. Interesting. I think he does in Volkanovski to pour you too. I'm, I am on board with you in this one. I am also on Volkanovski. Uh, looking at it, Volkanovski got good kick punch combos, exploding punches. Uh, he's got low hands, so he's open to counters, but I mean, that's half of the fighters. He wants to stay standing. He's got great endurance, and I worry about to pour his endurance as he's gone the full five just once in his career. Um, Volkanovski being a champion for so long, that's all he does anymore is these five round fights. Uh, I think Taporia does have a pretty massive wrestling edge or at least grappling edge over Volkanovski. Taporia, one of the things I saw about him, I also want to say he's got a good defensive body movement, but one of the things he does so well is he's got great like body shots. I have him as a body shot expert with his kicks, with his punches. I believe he had like a liver punch on one guy that he just took him to the ground. That's going to be hard on a guy like Volkanovski and wrestlers going to be hard on a guy like Volkanovski just because Volk is so compact and short. Yeah. 100%. That, that body style is just, it's not, uh, it, it's just exactly the type of body style that is going to affect a Borea. And I'm, I think Tapori is great. I really like him too. Um, I think the UFC has great plans for him. And I think Tapori is going to be a really fun guy to watch for time to come. And I really do think he'll probably be champion at some point. Also with the undefeated, I did want to mention this too. 14 and 0. Um, we saw Volkanovsky. He's lost both fives when he went up uh, trying to get that uh, double belt. When you lose like that, he's coming back and he's more motivated than ever. Taporia, he's already starting so high. Um, I, It's one of those things you don't know what you don't know. So I think this is going to be a very good learning lesson for Taporia. That's why I think he's going to get a lot out of this fight. And I think overall, this fight's going to be good for Taporia's career. I think this is going to be one of those fights that kind of launches him to that next level. He hasn't faced a guy like Volk. And I think he's going to learn a lot. I don't know. I think it's either going to be a decision or a knockout. I could see it going to decision and Taporia just being like really gas and tired at the end and starting to get worked. Or because he'd be in a KO, he gets worked so much that it gets an early stoppage. Not that he gets flatlined, but a, a, just a TKO that the, the uh, ref jumps in. <laughs> better start listening to the better in green podcast you will not regret it trust me trust me trust me and hey i'm dean blandino welcome 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 to better in green hey to better in green hey to better in green hey listen in and cash out that's what it's all about come on let's make cash now we always on spot and we cover old spot from the bottom to the top hey Shout out to Ethan, shout out to Wyatt, shout out to Ben. Welcome, welcome to our podcast. Better win green.